Hi, my name's Phil. I like to talk about politics. And last week I was talking about the looming prospect of care being withdrawn from critically ill patients suffering from the coronavirus. Not because of a lack of beds or even NHS staff, because these have been issues right from the start. There's nothing new there. But because the government wouldn't sign up on orders for the PPE needed to keep NHS medics safe. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So the weekend just gone has made a reality of what was warned about for several weeks now. Some hospitals have now not so much run low on the personal protective equipment needed, but run out completely. And this was in spite of the fact that many NHS staff were not even allowed to be issued with PPE in certain cases in order to preserve those dwindling stocks. The government has changed its guidance time and again on the use of personal protective equipment, not because we are suddenly learning more about it, but because they needed to come up with excuses to deny the NHS staff the use of it. A policy that means that dozens of healthcare workers have now died from contracting the virus as a direct result of dealing with the infected without protection. Some of those have even died in their own homes, denied the treatments that they have spent their working lives providing for others. So we've now entered a week where doctors are going to have to make decisions as to whether to treat a patient. The situation they face is that if they do treat the patient, they themselves may die, as a number of their colleagues already have. And the situation is only going to get worse as more and more hospitals run out of equipment over the coming days. And you have to wonder how much the government even know about it. Because famously, over the past week, various ministers have been asked how many people have died in their fields of influence. They've been asked how many healthcare workers have died, for example. How many people have died in care homes or in their own homes. And not a single minister in the Department for Health has been able to answer these questions at any point. The government actually do not know how many people have died from the coronavirus, not even a decent ballpark figure. The reason for this is not because, like Pretty Patel, they aren't capable of reading a number out from a piece of paper. It's because the government are deliberately not collecting that data because they don't want it to be known. The same may well be true of PPE stocks in the country. Individual hospitals and clinics will no doubt have their own records and be banging on ministers' doors saying we need more. But are the government even collating it to see where the hotspots of shortages are? Given that they aren't doing anywhere near enough to correct the situation, are they also failing to, correct, to, to collect this data because they don't want to know? Or, more specifically, because they fear a journalist may ask a question that requires a specific number in response, they seem to prefer saying that they don't know the answer and looking ridiculous than saying what the actual value is and looking dangerously incompetent. I notice some sections of the right-wing press have even stepped up covering um, you know, the, the, the issues for the NHS again. They've gone last week, it was all you know, covering things up and ignoring things that were going wrong. Now it's back to, we've got a PPE shortage here, government, what are you doing about it? It noted that 400,000 surgical gowns bound for the UK have been delayed whilst the contents are checked. Now, the problem here is not the fact that the goods are having to be checked and that is causing a delay in getting it to us. That needs to happen. That's a necessary part of the process. The issue is that the orders were put in too late. Was this caused by the fact that the government are not keeping centralised records of stocks around the country, I wonder? Ministers were yet again blaming unprecedented demand around the world for this equipment, as if they're trying to put the orders in, but there's massive demand and they can't, you know, they're in a queue to get the stuff. That's not true. Because yes, there is unprecedented demand, but there's also unprecedented production. And the fact that other countries are managing to keep themselves well stocked is also an indicator that that's a load of rubbish. As someone pointed out in a comment on one of my videos this week, shopkeepers in France seem better protected than doctors and nurses in our NHS right now. As far as I can see, the government now have two choices. One, actually start to do things properly, order well in advance, make sure we've got the stocks, at least in regards to giving the NHS access to the PPE it needs, and quite frankly, it should also include workers in care homes as well. Or two, they can carry on with their smoke screens and make the weekly applause ring increasingly hollow as more and more people die. Whether those people be healthcare workers or the patients who can't be treated because doctors and nurses refuse to do so without PPE. Because as a final point, there's a deeply misleading line that keeps being used in media reports regarding the deaths of healthcare workers. 
News reports into the deaths keep talking about them giving their lives or sacrificing their lives. No, that's wrong. They're not giving their lives. Their lives have been taken from them. They're not sacrificing their lives. The government are sacrificing their lives with their inaction. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, then please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.